In December of 2017, massive protests broke out in Iran. This is the story of the Free Iran 2018 movement that seeks to restart the country once they've ended the Islamic regime. Protesters are confronting Iran's support for foreign wars in Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen. Russian encroachment on Iran's territory along the Caspian has amplified the revolts. These policies have directly resulted in Iran's rising poverty, unemployment, and severe shortages of food, water, and electricity. If the objectives of the revolution were to set up an Islamic Republic, then they failed. I mean, they failed quite dramatically. If the objective of the Islamic Revolution was to set up an Islamic State, where you had an autocrat and a supreme leader who basically dictated everything, um, they're marginally more successful. With over five million Iranians currently residing outside the country, this has become an international movement for regime change. Silence is not an option. This movement is about corruption, human rights, a collapsing economy, and many failed promises of a government that has been in power since the revolution of 1979. message early on in the revolution is no to the East, i.e. the Soviet Union, no to the West, i.e. the United States, and let's choose this third path. The revolution is on. The forces of the left and the right that unite behind Khomeini have one thing in common, hatred of the Shah and his secret police, Savak. With Khomeini in power, Iran became an Islamic republic. Donate Iran. از ابتدای انقلاب از سوی سازمان ملل متحد محکوم شد که نقض حقوق بشر بود. تعدادی از مدافعان حقوق بشر مجبور شدن از ایران بیان بیرون بن که تحت تعقیب بودن. So in this atmosphere there was no room for talking about human rights. for challenging about women's rights, for challenging for social freedoms, for challenging for freedom of speech. بیشتر این صدمه ای که انقلاب به ایران زد به نظر من در حیطه قوانین است. ایراد بزرگش اینه که سیستم حکومتی بر اساس قانون شریعت داره کار میکنه. The question was very clear. Islamic Republic or no Islamic Republic. The pollsters had separated uh, the voters of uh, naysayers from yaysayers. So it was obvious who was going to vote what. As I remember, there were six people ahead of me that uh, they were going to vote for the uh, no Islamic Republic. And uh, the pollster was uh, able to persuade three out of six actually that should join the others uh, in line that had seen the light. From what I understand about uh, 600 people all together in Iran, uh, they voted for uh, no Islamic uh, Republic. And uh, out of these 600 people, some uh, were uh, able to escape, but the, the others were uh, captured and killed. You know, the Islamic Republic is this curiously hybrid, um, some people call it an unholy marriage, but sort of a hybrid structure between sort of essentially what is a republican system of government, but then on top of that you have this supreme leader, and um, this has always been the, 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 the fly in the ointment. It is not Saddam Hussein's Iraq, it's not North Korea, it's not Fidel Castro's Cuba, it's very unique. It's a fusion of Islam, as they see it, as the ruling elite in Iran wants it to be, and politics. 
The president of Iran doesn't have a lot of power. He basically has power over the economy, over some domestic issues, but not over foreign policy, and almost everybody else, every other branch of government, report to uh, the supreme leader. And what you have is essentially a king, a religious king in the form of the, the supreme leader, and he has his sort of domestic and foreign policy establishment. So as you can see, there's a juxtaposition of uh, powers, and for the outsiders, that could be very perplexing. Who is the ultimate decision maker? Who really runs the country? The force behind the supreme leader is a powerful military arm known as the IRGC, which has been crushing internal dissent for almost 40 years. What you have now are two militaries, and each one of them, the regular military and the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, is created as a Praetorian Guard to protect the revolution and to protect the regime. They each have their own Air Force, Navy, land forces. You know, the IRGC is the big economic engine. It is the power, the much more powerful than the defense ministry. They are in parliament. They are heavily involved in the economics of the country, in the culture, in sport, and all works of life. They have their presence. They are also in control of the message system, heavily involved in the nuclear issue. A good chunk of the Iranian economy is in the hand of Revolutionary Guards and their subsidiaries and, uh, and so forth. So Revolutionary Guards are going to have a very clear control uh, over uh, many aspects of life uh, uh, in Iran. <laughs> the IRGC is the main force behind the suppression of human rights activists, peaceful protests, worker strikes, labor movements, and freedom of speech. The revolutionary courts are notorious for the torture, rape, and execution of political prisoners without due process. Many of the political prisoners have been arrested, and 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 have been arrested, you cannot find any organization working for human rights and equality because they say equality between the people is not allowed in Islam. حکومت ایران بیش از هر چیز از تبادل اخبار و اطلاعات درست در بین مردم حراس داره. به خاطر همین استش که روی ساتلایت ها پارازیت میندازه که برنامه هایی که راجع به اتفاقات ایران هست و از کشورهای بیرون از ایران، کشورهای خارجی برای ایران پخش میشه رو مردم بهش دسترسی پیدا نکنن. هزاران صفحه اینترنتی در ایران فیلتر میشه. If you speak to ordinary Iranians, I mean the number of Iranians who care about how do you go about there and bring the United States down or change the global order uh, those sort of very lofty issues are not the ones that keep Iranians up uh, late at night. It's the issues of inflation, un unemployment, underemployment, corruption. Last week's re-election of hardliner Ahmadinejad has sparked days of protests in the country, many of which have turned violent. In many ways, 2009 marked the moment when Iranian political campaigning came of age. <laughs> و اون چهره های بشاش و مصمم اومدن تو خیابون ها پرچم سبز گرفتن به نماد پیروی از جنبش تحول خواه و آزادی خواه جنبش سبز The protests were pretty well organized I mean they were huge I mean they were enormous I mean this was far larger than what happened in the revolution by the way Supporters of defeated candidate Mir Hussein Musavi are demanding another vote saying the election was rigged We still to this day don't know how much fraud took place in 2005 when Ahmadinejad uh, managed to win the presidency. And we know pretty much without any doubt that major fraud took place for his re-election 
in 2009 when we had the Green Opposition Movement rise up against that uh, election result that so many people clearly detected to have been fraudulent. نقش رسانه های شبکه های مثل فیسبوک توییتر خیلی پررنگ بود. What you had was students and journalists and others building up a network of contacts on the ground through social media and others. این اولین بار بود در تاریخ جمهوری اسلامی که میلیون ها ایرانی در خیابون ها خواستار یک تغییر خیلی عمیق هستند. شعار جمهوری ایرانی سرداده شد. At least 20 people are reported to have been killed since the demonstrations began following the June 12th presidential election. A lot of the problems came from the IRGC sort of internal security apparatus. The IRGC brutally suppressed the Green Movement protesters, many of whom still remain in prison. The corruption has only gotten worse since the 2009 election. President Rouhani has been ineffective in his ability to make positive change for the people. حالا نسل جدید در ایران شکل گرفته. نسلی که واقعا متفاوت هست. You have a lot of young people. The universities are full. They're politically active. They're politically engaged. This is a country that, by all accounts, is extremely outward-looking, wants to be part of the world, wants to be you know, connected to the latest technological developments. And if you're going to stop that from happening, I think eventually you'll have a blowback. We are in relation to the fact that the group of people want to destroy the community, or to destroy the community, or to destroy the community, or to destroy اختشاش ایجاد بکنن حتما دولت تحمل نخواهد کرد حتما مردم ما تحمل نخواهند کرد بابا ول کنید نمیتونید این کار نیستید ارزه ندارید مملکت داری ارزه میخواد شما دوزای خوبی هستید چی از جون ملت میخواد Protesters have drafted a new constitution. Reza Pahlavi is the chosen instrument to bring about regime change from the Islamic Republic to a secular democracy. The fight will not be easy as the people will need to overcome the government's network of criminal activity. To really see why people leave the country, to seriously see why we have addiction, to seriously see why we have unemployment, underemployment, all hosts of social issues, you got to have an inward look and you can't keep blaming the United States because the fact is Shah has been gone for a very long time now, almost four decades since the Islamic Republic came to be. They've had plenty of time to prove their credentials. There, are, there must be fears in, in certain corridors in Tehran about, you know, the viability of the Islamic Republic as it is, and whether they can just stay the course or whether they need to um, change behavior. With U.S. support for the Free Iran 2018 movement, the protesters hope to restore and preserve the international integrity of Iran's wealth, beauty, culture, and history as a place that has stood for thousands of years. Iranians are very self-conscious about their history, so to speak, uh, and sometimes to, de to a degree that really is uh, detrimental to our multicultural, multilingual, multi-ethnic identity. <laughs> So much of Iran is about being these mixes of things and a history that is very varied and full of tumultuous events and ups and downs and survivals and flowering under most adverse circumstances. Iran is like any other big country, 80 million population. It has a lot of differences, complexities, diversities. All of it is part of the makeup that is 
Iran and its identity. And that seems to me to really need that kind of historical reflection. The image of Iran is often in the public arena, in the media, in terms of sound bites, uh, distortions, oversimplifications. So you really need a documentary, even a long documentary, to get into the complexities of the country. <laughs> Bole nozam de chobra